Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Hexes and Horrors. Thank you so much for being here. If you are new to my channel, I just really talk about whatever I feel inclined to talk about on here. I do try to keep it aligned with my other social media channels. So it's mostly history, haunts, horror, and Halloween. But sometimes I throw in some thrifting videos or room tours or some other random things. I also recently started posting some yoga flows on this channel. Um, it is obviously not anything spooky, but I am a certified yoga instructor and I have been out of teaching for a little bit of a while since moving from New York to Pennsylvania. So I thought what better way to get back into teaching and share my practice with others by just uploading my videos to YouTube where maybe some people will be interested and check them out. So you can find all the Halloween stuff, all the spooky stuff, and then all the yoga stuff and some random little room tours and refreshes and thrifting sprinkled here and there. But for this video, we're gonna keep it spooky. We are talking about Salem today. I have a Salem sweatshirt on, my newest one. I kind of threw away a lot of my older ones that were a little outdated from probably over 10 years ago. And so this is my newest one that I got recently and I really like it. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you guys the itinerary that I had for my very first visit to Salem ever. So we're taking it way back to, I think, 1997. And if you've been with me from the super, super very beginning, my Instagram handle at first was Salem since 97 because I loved the alliteration of it all. And because that was the time that I had visited Salem for the first time, 1997. And obviously it was the time of my life and I kept going back. So I'm gonna share my itinerary from that very first trip, which strangely and interestingly is an itinerary you could probably follow today because a lot of the same attractions and the same things are still there and still open, which is kind of cool. All right, so let's take it back. It's 1997. Your girl's in middle school at the time. I think I was 12 years old. I was probably in seventh grade. I have a late birthday, so I was always about a year younger than all of my peers. So if you're like, wait, you're supposed to be in sixth grade when you turn 12, um, that's why I have a November birthday. So I was always younger than everyone else. So I was, I would have been 12 in seventh grade. So I've told this story a couple of times on Instagram. If you follow me over there, you might've heard it before, but my very first trip to Salem was a trip with my Girl Scout troop. Now, I feel like a lot of Girl Scout troops don't travel the way that we did, but we had the most amazing troop leader. It was one of the girls in our troops, mom. She was a very artsy lady. She worked in the arts and theater and directing. She was just a really creative lady, still is. And she had a lot of great ideas for where she wanted to take us on trips. And Salem was one of them, luckily. So we did go during Haunted Happenings. The Haunted Happenings in 1997 was nothing like what it is today. But a lot of the same vibes still applied. So I'm going to walk you through it all. We took a coach bus to get up there. So I'm from New York. From where I grew up, Salem is about a three and a half hour drive, depending on traffic. So we left from there. We took a coach bus up to Salem. We parked our coach bus right where Derby Street intersects with Hawthorne Boulevard, right where there's, um, there's that statue, I, I think Theobald something. <laughs> there's a visitor sign and a map if you've ever walked by that. That's where we parked our coach bus. I vividly remember getting off the bus and looking at the map and just like figuring out where we were and what we were heading to first. That is a vivid memory that I have. And of course, just being tourists because we had just piled out of this coach bus. There were a lot of people around. I remember it being fairly crowded, but again, nothing like it would be today in October. There was a chill in the air, of course. I think it was early or mid-October. It definitely was not super close to Halloween. So it had to be early or mid-October, one of those weekends. We did go on a weekend. And yeah, it was my whole Girl Scout troop, our leader. I don't think we had any parents chaperoning with us. Um, but just the leader, maybe like one other parent. I can't really remember anyone else being there that was an adult, but I feel like there probably had to be. We're in Salem, we're there, we're ready to check it out. 
So day one, we got a lot done. We probably had about half a day because the drive took up the morning and like early afternoon. We went to the Salem Witch Museum. Um, that experience for me was something else. If you go in there today, especially as an adult, it's not maybe the most thrilling or exciting museum, although it does give a very good overall history of the witch trials, in my opinion. And I do really like the section, the second room that you go into, where they have the history of witches. And it goes from, you know, witches in cinema all the way up to present day and how practicing Wiccans are more accepted but still face a lot of discrimination in different ways. That room's pretty cool. When you're a kid going into the Salem Witch Museum and the lights go off and you hear those booming sounds over the loudspeaker and then each of the scenes is lighting up, it's like a lot more of an intense experience, I would say. And so I was hooked. And especially because back in the 90s, the red glowing circle that's on the floor of the Salem Witch Museum, which today has the names of all of the accused, that used to be a pentagram. So this light up pentagram is glowing on the floor in front of you. And like I said, it just made for a much more intense experience. And I was like, what is this? They changed the pentagram. I'm not sure exactly when, but I believe because they didn't think the pentagram really fit in with the story that was being told. So they got rid of that, but it was there in the 90s. And I'm very happy to say that I was able to see it. After the Salem Witch Museum, we went to the Witch Dungeon, which is another great museum in Salem. You get a similar story there, but you do get a live reenactment of one of the witch trials, and then you get to go downstairs and see, again, a recreation of the Salem Jail and what it looked like and what tiny quarters people were kept in and the conditions that they were kept in, which were less than stellar. I don't remember a whole lot else about the first day that we were there. I just know we did those two things. And then we probably had dinner and went back to the hotel. We stayed at a motel outside of town. I don't remember where it was or what it was. And then we would just take the coach bus back into town in the morning. I imagine the hotel was like no more than a 15 minute drive away. All right, day two, we started off strong with Cry Innocent. Now this experience still exists. It's only put on during haunted happenings. It is a show a live show um, and like I said it's only put on during the month of October during haunted happenings. I actually have not done Cry Innocent since this first visit to Salem but I still remember it like it was yesterday and I've seen the actors and actresses out on the street starting their performance and it's always really fun to see even that little snippet of it even if you don't have tickets and you're not following them upstairs to where the performance is really going to take place it's still so fun to see them starting out on essex street which is what they do they come out on essex street if you have tickets you're given a meeting point and then you see the actors and actresses come out and start to perform start to point fingers and accuse people of being a witch and then you're called to follow them into where the performance takes place. Which, when I went in the 90s, my memory could be wrong, but I thought we had gone into the upstairs of the Old Town Hall, and that's where they did the performance. But it could have been a different upstairs place, and I'm just not remembering correctly. It was set up like a courtroom. There were pews for the audience to sit in. And then they performed a mock trial and they get the audience involved. They ask for volunteers, that kind of thing. It's really fun and a really good way to get a sense of what a trial was like back then. Because as we all know, it was a lot of shenanigans and nonsense. Yeah, if anyone else knows exactly where that was located in the 90s, do let me know. But I, my memory tells me it was the upstairs of the old town hall. I don't know how accurate my memory is. All right. After Cry Innocent, we did a daytime walking tour. I have no idea what tour company we went with. Probably they still exist today, but we did, you know, your run-of-the-mill historical walking tour in Salem and learned a lot about the witch trials. After that, we took a ride over to Pioneer Village. They had an experience there where you would essentially travel from each different little home to the next. And there would be actors and actresses inside talking to you and talking about who they were and kind of their role in their community. It wasn't entirely centered around the witch trials. It was more centered around colonial life. 
but the witch trials were mentioned and were pulled into it, of course. So you just kind of got a sense of what life was like for people back then and how the witch trials played a part in their daily lives. Then we hopped on the trolley or coach bus or however we got there and went back to downtown Salem. It was dinner time at this point and we had a mystery murder dinner planned. I remember this being one of the things we were doing that I was the most excited about. It was somewhere in the Pickering Wharf. Again, maybe my memory is not super accurate, but I remember it being in the Pickering Wharf and I remember it being somewhere that had, again, an upstairs location. So we walked in, there was a restaurant set up, I guess, and then there was an upstairs um, and that's where the murder mystery dinner took place. It was kind of like a small ballroom. There was a wooden dance floor in the center. We were set at a table. Um, I remember I dressed up. This is what I wore. And this was the night of the murder mystery dinner. And I had my hands on my face like that because I would get my nails done for Halloween every year. And I was trying to show off my nails. Stupid me. Like they would even be visible in a grainy Kodak photograph, but I was trying to show off my nails and that's why I had my hands on my face. But this murder mystery dinner was super fun. It was really cool. There was of course audience participation and involvement and it was just a lot of fun. Murder mystery dinner was our last stop. So we went back to the hotel after that, got some rest. And then we had one more day in Salem. I believe it was a three day trip. Now for the last day in Salem, we were encouraged to dress up, of course. So dressing up throughout the month of October was very much a thing in the 90s like it is today. I honestly don't remember what I dressed up as and I'm a little disappointed about that. I do remember what some of my um, Girl Scout friends dressed as. I think someone did kind of like a Thelma and Louise costume, which is so cool. Uh, someone else just had on like the big, the glasses with the big nose and the bushy eyebrows. But yeah, so we dressed up and kind of walked around a little bit. We had gone to the Witch Village that day, which is right near the Charter Street Cemetery. And we went into all the different little haunted attractions that are there. They still exist today. You have Frankenstein's Laboratory. Um, there's like the Wax Museum, I think. There's a couple of different things in that witch village. We had done one of the haunted attractions and then we went to the Pirates Museum, which is right nearby. Now, this was not real pirates because that's a new exhibit in Salem. This was just the, I guess, original Pirates Museum, which is still there today. I don't really remember too much about it, honestly. It obviously gave a history of pirates and the maritime history of Salem. Real pirates I went to this past December. And that was a really cool experience. They gave you a really good overhaul of maritime history and there's a lot of real artifacts and objects that they have in the museum to look at. After the pirate museum we did a little bit of shopping which we hadn't really done yet. So we got a chance to go in and out of some different shops. Shops were a lot different I guess in the 90s than they are now. Now you have so many different shops popping up and opening left and right. Great new businesses, cool new stuff to check out all the time. I remember Lori Cabot, I don't, I know she had the shop on Essex Street, but I think she had something else in the Pickering Wharf. And someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, there was a shop there that she was either working at or it was like partially owned by her. It's not there anymore but it was in the Pickering War, if I remember we went to it. Of course, Crowhaven Corner was there. It's been there forever. We definitely went into Crowhaven Corner. There were some interesting bookshops um, along Derby Street that are no longer there, or they've been put under new ownership and have a different name now, but I remember checking out some of those. I don't really remember buying too much. I would always buy incense wherever I was. So I definitely probably brought some incense home. I think I definitely got like a t-shirt or sweatshirt or something. But, you know, again, I was 12. So I wasn't like crazy shopping and it was my first time there. So everything was sort of new to me. And then that night for our last night, um, we had kind of a slower day on our last day from what I remember. So the next thing we did was, you know, dinner and then a haunted nighttime walking tour. So we did the daytime one, then we also did the nighttime haunted one. That was right up my alley, of course. Super fun. We went to all the haunted spots in Salem. 
You probably know them if you've been there and you're into that kind of stuff. One of the most vivid memories I have from that haunted walking tour is standing in front of the Merchant Hotel or the Joshua Ward House, which is right next to the Dunkin' Donuts. And they were telling us this story about why it's one of the most haunted places in Salem. And I just remember thinking to myself, why are we standing next to a Dunkin' Donuts right now? Like I couldn't, <laughs> it didn't make sense to me that this historic place that was so haunted was next to a Dunkin' Donuts. Even at the age of 12, I was like, this doesn't seem right. And then I took a picture with my Kodak camera and I do not have the picture to this day. I think I lost it. But there for sure was like a crazy light orb in one of the windows. It was not the reflection of my camera or anything like that. But the window wasn't directly in front of me. It was off to the side and there was this like crazy light orby like shape thing in it. It was super weird and super creepy. And as soon as I got that developed, I was like, it's a ghost. So yeah, that's one moment that I remember really well from that haunted tour. Yeah, so that was pretty much our trip. Needless to say, it was incredible and I had to go back, which I did the following year. I begged my family to go to Salem and my parents booked a trip for October during haunted happenings. Myself, my brother, my parents went up. We stayed at the Hawthorne Hotel and yeah, it was great. My parents to this day still talk about like what a fun trip it was. My brother he was not so much into it. Um, it obviously was more of a trip for me and my interests, but he was a good sport about it. Yeah, my mom has since been back with me to Salem. My dad has not, but he speaks very fondly of it and still has really good memories from that trip. So that first trip in 1997 is what brought me to where I am today, to creating an Instagram account with the handle Salem since 97 has obviously now since changed. I no longer have that handle. It was a very important trip to me and kind of kicked off my interest in Salem really and I guess traveling to spooky alternative places. So this itinerary you for sure could follow today. Everything on it still exists in Salem. The only things that are different are some of the tours and experiences like the one in Pioneer Village, the murder mystery dinner. Those are kind of like one-off things that might not be taking place every October or every weekend in October. But there are a ton of different experiences and things that you can find to fit your interests that happen in the month of October. There's a million things going on besides the regular um, staple attractions. So you can always find something to do and to fill your time. And if you're going in October, I always do recommend to actually not fill your time so much and leave a little bit of leeway, a little bit of time to just walk around and soak it all in and people watch and just kind of walk around, you know, not have like too many set plans for the time that you're there. So I hope this was a little bit interesting. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you've done any of the things on this itinerary. And let me know if you visited back in the 90s or the early 2000s and what your experience was like and how different it is from 2024. I love finding other people who have also visited for that span of time or who have visited in the 90s, the early 2000s, even before the 90s. And I love just hearing other people's experiences and what you did when you were there, what it was like, how it's different from now. It's always just really interesting to me to see what's happened just over that span of time. So thank you again so much for watching. Thank you for being here and taking the time to watch my video and be interested in anything that I'm saying. I really appreciate it and I appreciate every like and every subscribe and every person who takes the time to watch any of my videos. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you aren't already subscribed and you're new here, go ahead and subscribe to my channel so that you can keep up to date with any new videos. And I'm assuming you maybe found me through Instagram or TikTok, but if you're not already following me over on those platforms, go ahead and give a follow. I do tend to spend more of my time over there than here on YouTube, although I'm trying to be a little bit better and a little more consistent with YouTube. Yeah, again, thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Stay spooky.